Billy said, mate, assaulted by six police officers, and yet they said that I assaulted them. And if those cops who did bash you that day and unlawfully arrest you are watching this right now, what would you say to him? Well, I said to him, I said to him on the day, I'll see you in court. You know, he's gone on with his life, lived his life, probably doesn't even remember me, probably doesn't even remember the incident. I live in pain every single day. From, and it's not just the physical pain. The physical pain is, is doable. I can handle that. It's the emotional, like even standing right here in front of the magistrate's court, seeing police cars here, it, it messes with me. You know, I, I need closure with this myself, Harvey. So your support is greatly appreciated. Have you many for Rebel News in Melbourne outside the Magistrates Court here today to meet another victim of the brutal policing during the lockdown in our city. Simon, who attended a protest in 2021 as a citizen journalist to just film and share what was really going on, was approached by police and violently arrested, left with a broken back and resisting arrest charges, attracting five years in jail. Now tell us what happened. Well, what happened, there was a small business protest on the steps of Flinders Street Station. Um, I have a lot of friends who lost their businesses as part of the lockdowns. So I went there, I didn't go to participate in the protest, I went to view it and to capture it on film because I just share it on my socials. So I met with a friend who was going there as well. And we just witnessed how the police were arbitrarily arresting people on the steps of Flinders Street. Um, we were asked to move on because we were standing on the steps of Flinders Street, standing with police officers from Bendigo. And we were just having a chat and we were saying, and they were asking us, does this happen every week? I said, well, yeah, it does. And then the port officers started walking across the road and they started pointing at us on the steps of Flinders Street without masks, talking to police. And we were told to move on by the police to saying that it's not a good look to have unmasked people standing on the steps of Flinders during a protest, which was ironic. So we moved off to the other side of the road, um, to the cathedral and then to Young and Jackson's where people were being arbitrarily arrested. And we just witnessed the port officers coming in there, arbitrarily arresting people and taking them away. At the end of that, I walked to the St. Paul's Cathedral car park and I was just videotaping the police, just port officers going back into their van. Some of them saw me there. They had nothing, no problem with it. Until one guy comes up. Hi, yeah. Hi mate. Okay. I got an exemption, mate. Are you going to go now? I don't need to show you. Too easy. Do you outside your 10Ks? Are you allowed to be or what? I'm here. There's a public interest here. Oh, right you got any idea on you? No, I don't. Hey, Kenny. You got no idea on you? No. All right, well. I'll grab some details off you. We'll do a check. Sure. And if you're not breaching anything, then you're all good. Otherwise, you'll. Uh, Oh, they're all coming out of the truck. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Can I have your names and badge numbers, all of you, please? I'll tell you that in two seconds. Well, I'm asking you your details. So you can have my number, three nine three eight zero. Your name is? So my number is three nine three eight zero. You can wear it here. Your num, your name? My name is Christian Scan. Attached to the public order response team. Okay. Station? I just told you. It's public order response team. Yeah. yeah. Give me two seconds. I'll grab yours. No worries. How are you guys? How do you feel about all this? How do you guys feel? What's your last name? I don't need to tell you. Am I under arrest? Well, you will be if you don't tell me your name. Well, I'll yeah. arrest me then. Oh, okay. All right, Fair arrest enough. me then. And I'll take Who's you to court. I'll yeah, take you to court. But instead of arresting me, six port officers jumped me. Put my head down into their chest, grab my arm, grab my arm, started kneeing me, took me to the ground, knees to the throat, knees to the head, knees to the back, to the point where they broke my back as a result of copping 20 knees to my body on the day. So they uh, charged me with five charges, three around Cho, breaking Cho charges, one failing to produce my details, and the other one was resist arrest. Six officers jumped me, and I resisted arrest apparently. Now you've had a major win, what was it? Well, after a lot of touring and throwing, a lot of adjournments, uh, my resist charge came to the magistrates to a committal hearing to see if it was gonna be committed to a county court. So the evidence was produced. Mind you, before that, they tried to do a plea bargain with me to try to plead guilty to certain charges. But then my solicitor went through my, through my legal uh, situation, presented a very, very, very detailed legal explanation as to why I didn't need to produce my details, why their arrest was illegal, and then the use of excessive force, et cetera, et cetera. It went on for quite a while. And surprisingly, when the prosecutor started responding, he started off by saying, well, he resisted arrest and he had, to be, he had to be handcuffed because he was a threat to the public and to the police. 
And the magistrate stopped and said, okay, well, how was he a threat? Because based on the, the video footage I've seen, he was standing alone. And his response, I kid you not, Avi, was he was leaning against the wall, he was chewing gum, and he had glasses on. So that's how I was a threat to public and to the police, who, mind you, were six armed port officers, and I was there just chewing gum with my glasses on. I just, so, you know, I guess I'm simple. How does that, in their minds, how is that a threat to public safety from a health perspective, I guess? Mate, you tell me, and we'll both be much more intelligent than we are right now. So I guess that the judge herself didn't uh, fall for that excuse either. She dismissed the case. Well, from what I was seeing, Arvi, I was just a silent observer. I saw my solicitor talking, I saw the prosecutor respond, and I'm just in disbelief as to how they presented their case, all right? So she said, look, I need to adjourn this to be able to review the, the footage, I need to review the statements, review based on what my solicitor went through, and she adjourned it for the following week. The following week she came, we came back and she just threw out the resist charge like this, and then gave a very, very detailed response. So basically the crux of it was they had no legal right to ask me for my name address. So the whole arrest, the whole excessive force, the whole everything was illegal from, from day one. So that's where it is, and now I'm just left to battle the other charges. Well, it's fantastic news that Simon's resisting arrest charge that carries five years in jail has been thrown out by the court. His fight is far from over. From day one, I was saying that this is not about me. And, and I, I, thank, I thank the community for supporting me. I had a GoFundMe campaign, raised some money um, to offset some of the costs there. As you know, these things all cost a lot of money there. So I'm thankful for all the people that contributed to that. But the battle continues. The battle continues. And I always said from day one, this is not just about me. This is about the people of Melbourne. We need to have some closure about what happened on our streets for almost two years now. If you think Simon's story is as important as I do, make sure to like, comment, but most importantly, share it far and wide because the mainstream media, they want to pretend like none of this ever happened. But the world deserves to know, Victorians deserve to know what their police did in the name of health. And then to make sure you keep up with Simon's story and all the other stories still happening today, head over to fightthefines.com.au. We're following up on those stories and we're also still fighting a number of cases. So if you're willing and you're able to, please still consider contributing again to fightthefines.com.au because some of those cases cannot go on without your help. Fightthefines.com.au, watch this space, watch what happens with Simon's case, see the other cases and support some of the fights still happening today.